Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your attendance. And I have no announcements to make at the top, so I'll go straight to the Associated Press. Uh, thanks, Jay, uh, for here stating the obvious. Uh, the White House right now is confronting a confluence of, of issues, uh, Benghazi talking points, uh, IRS reviews of political groups, Justice Department review of journalists, phone records. And in every instance, either the President or you have place the burden of responsibility someplace else. Uh, on the Benghazi talking points, it's been uh, political motivations on the Hill, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the IRS, it's been the bureaucrats at the IRS, and on the Justice Department issue yesterday in your statement, uh, you said those matters are handled independently by the Justice Department. But it is the President's administration, so I wonder, doesn't responsibility for setting tone, setting uh, direction, ultimately rest with the President on these matters? Well, the responsibility to set tone and to focus on the priorities of the American people is absolutely the responsibility of the President. And you see and hear him do that every day uh, as he fulfills his duties as President. You know, I think you have to separate these issues. And I think if you look at the answers the President gave yesterday in response to questions on the one hand about the clear political circus that Benghazi has become, and his response to questions about the reports of activity by the IRS, I think you see um, uh, something different. He made clear that if the reports about uh, the activity of IRS personnel proved to be true, uh, he would find them outrageous, and he would expect that appropriate action be taken and that people be held responsible. He had no tolerance for targeting of uh, specific groups, conservative groups, if uh, the reporting is true on this, uh, and he would expect uh, action to be taken. But this is a matter, when it comes to the IRS, that is under review by the independent Inspector General. We have not seen that report. Uh, it is our understanding that its release is fairly imminent, and once we have that report, we'll be able to assess next steps. Uh, so at this point, we have to wait for the action of an independent uh, investigator, if you will, the Inspector General, uh, before we can jump to conclusions about what happened, uh, whether there was a deliberate targeting of groups inappropriately, uh, and, and if that's the case, what action should be taken. Uh, but you can be sure, and I would point you to the President's response yesterday, what his feelings are about this kind of action if it, in fact, took place. On the issue of uh, what is a Department of Justice investigation, as I understand it, you know, the President is a strong defender of the First Amendment and a firm believer in the need for the press to be unfettered in its ability to conduct investigative reporting and facilitate a free flow of information. He also, of course, recognizes the need for the Justice Department to investigate alleged criminal activity without undue un influence. And as I said yesterday in my statement, other than press reports, we have no knowledge of any attempt by the Justice Department to seek phone records uh, of the Associated Press. We are not involved at the White House in any decisions made in connection with ongoing criminal investigations, uh, as those matters are handled appropriately by the Justice Department, independently. And I understand there are a lot of questions about the reports about DOJ's actions. And uh, from my background, I understand them well. Uh, but in this situation where the department appears to be conducting a criminal investigation, uh, it would be wholly inappropriate for me to have answers to those questions. I don't have them. And I have to refer you to the Department of Justice. If I could then go back to the IRS issue, the President did use the word if mm -hmm. these activities have taken place. But there has been an acknowledgment on the part of the uh, IRS leadership that these things did indeed occur. So I wondered why the President used that phrasing in claiming that it was an outrageous. Well, those from the IRS who have spoken about this obviously have much greater insight into what took place than we do. We have to, we have not seen the report. We have not, uh, you know, independently collected information about what transpired. We need the independent inspector general's report to be released before we can make judgments. Uh, you know, one 
person's view of what actions were taken or what that individual did is not enough for us to say something concretely happened that was inappropriate. I think if you look at some of the what, what's been said, you know, that uh, it, the actions were inadvertent or not, or or constituted something that was specific and inappropriate or not. And I think that what we have to do responsibly is wait for the independent inspector, inspector general's report to be released before we assess next steps. But again, if you look at what the president said yesterday, he was very clear that if there was deliberate, specific targeting of groups, that would be uh, outrageous and uh, would require, in his view, uh, action be taken. And that action, would, it, would there be something that the White House could do you know Well, I think that we have to wait and see what next steps are, because obviously there is, uh, you know, a, a significant amount of uh, independence of the IRS, as obviously as well as the NEIG, and we have to, we have to wait for what the IG, IG assesses before we can decide what next steps uh, might appropriately be taken. Jeff. Uh, Jay, it's now clear that senior tax officials knew about this extra scrutiny of conservative <coughs> groups since 2011, which means also during the election and that this was withheld until after the election. Um, should the White House have been informed earlier? My understanding is that when there is a review, as there was and is uh, by an inspector general, that when th uh, the uh, end of that process is nearing, and a report is uh, about to be released, uh, a notification is appropriate and routine. And that is what happened, and that happened several weeks ago. Prior to that, there was no knowledge here at the White House. Now, before I make judgments about, or anyone else here makes judgments about whether, uh, you know, a, the White House should have known more or others in the administration should have known more, we have to find out what exactly happened. And that's why it, it's important for us to wait for the release of the Inspector General's report, which, uh, you know, will hopefully be fairly imminent. So based on the reporting, do you have any concerns that this was withheld when it could have been a, a big story? Well, we have, very, we, have, we have serious concerns about what's been reported. I think you saw that reflected in what the President said. Uh, and again, it's been reported, and we have to make sure uh, that the independent review of this by an Inspector General uh, is uh, revealed, and we can assess that and assess what actually happened, what motivations there were behind uh, whatever actions were taken, and then decide uh, what action is appropriate and who should take it. When did the President find out about the Department of Justice's subpoenas for the Associated Press? Uh, yesterday. And the, I mean, we, uh, let me just be clear. We don't have any independent knowledge of that. He found out about the news reports uh, yesterday on the road. What was his reaction to that? Does he believe that this was an overreach? Uh, all I can tell you is that I cannot and he cannot comment specifically on an ongoing criminal investigation or actions that uh, investigators at the Department of Justice may or may not have taken. It would be wholly inappropriate. And if, if we did comment on it or if we did have insight in, uh, into it, uh, you would appropriately ask why and, it, why, you know, is that uh, correct procedure because it would not be. So I can't comment on the specifics of that, but I can tell you that the President feels strongly that we need uh, a uh, the press to be able to be unfettered in its pursuit of investigative journalism. And you saw when he was a senator, the president uh, co-sponsor legislation that would have uh, provided further protections for uh, journalists in this regard. And uh, he is also mindful of the need for secret and classified information to remain secret and classified in order to protect our national security interests. So there are, uh, there is a careful balance here that must be attained. Uh, but I, I think it's important to look at the President's past here to understand where he comes from in this broadly, uh, broadly speaking, where he comes from in regard to issues like this. Uh, but we simply can't uh, comment on the specific uh, investigation. President Obama is being compared to President Nixon on this. How does he feel about that? Uh, again, I don't have a reaction from President uh, Obama. I can tell you that the people who make those kind of comparisons need to check their history uh, because, uh, you know, what we have here with one issue in Benghazi is so clearly, as we're learning more and more, a political sideshow, a deliberate effort to politicize a tragedy. The President feels very strongly about that. You heard him address that yesterday. On, the, on these other issues, these are, these are things that 
uh, we are finding out about and we need to wait appropriately for independent action to be completed before uh, he can in any way take action or comment specifically on it. Uh, you know, I think that it is a reflection of the, you know, sort of rapid politicization of everything that you have that kind of commentary. Uh, everything uh, becomes, uh, you know, uh, a huge uh, political issue uh, when, if you look at the facts, and I think Benghazi is instructive in this, the real issue is that four Americans died. And we need to do everything we can, as the President has committed himself to doing, to finding out who did it, finding out why, and to taking the steps necessary to ensure that our diplomatic personnel are protected and our facilities are protected so that what happened in Benghazi doesn't happen again, uh, instead of trying to score political points, which Republicans have been doing since the hours after the attack. And it's, it's very unfortunate. And it's not what the American people expect us to do, because what, going back to Jim's original question, you know, the, the President is here to try to achieve the things that he told the American people he would try to achieve, and that they supported uh, him in two elections now in trying to achieve. And that is to focus on the middle class, to help uh, in any way he can, to strengthen the middle class, to help the country build the economic foundation that's essential for the kind of dominance economically in the 21st century that this country enjoyed in the 20th. And that is you know, that is what he spends his time focusing on. That and the uh, paramount interests of protecting uh, the national security of the United States. Jessica. Okay, you say check our history, rapid commentary, but you have to understand and hear how it sounds like the administration might be hiding something. So can we take these one at a time? On the IRS on Friday, mm -hmm. they gave one version of the story that's changed several times since then. So can you just say plainly, does the president believe that they're being truthful? And does he think that the leadership there needs to change? Well, I, I, don't, have that, I don't understand how that tracks with your first uh, uh, sentence about uh, assertion here. We have seen the reports, as the president said, and if the reports are true, he would consider well, them he, outrageous. Even this IRS has acknowledged that some of this wrongdoing has happened. So the president and this administration could agree. And I think you heard the president say yesterday that yeah. if it turns out to be the case, and again, there's a, there's a lot of reporting, not all of it Jay, complimentary, some one, of it contradictory. He said there was IRS to, personnel, which sounded like it was mm -hmm. isolated. We've now learned that it was. How could IRS personnel be isolated? That could be the entire agency. I mean, it, it's, well, well uh, he's basing it. That it touched but the Jessica, Washington, he's basing, office. Does he, is Jessica, he concerned that this is a broader problem? He's concerned by the, he's concerned by every report he sees on this. You can believe that he is concerned by that. And that is why he uh, looks forward to finding out what the IG report says, and then deciding what next steps need to be taken if, and, and who needs to take them. Uh, and that's, you know, instead of rushing to conclusions or, uh, you, know, you know, perpetrating consequences before we even know specifically what happened on, and the whole story would be inappropriate for a president to do. And so, again, he made clear what his view of this action uh, if there was specific, deliberate targeting of cons uh, conservative groups or any groups inappropriately, uh, he would be outraged. And he finds the suggestions of that to be outrageous. But we cannot and we should not prejudge the, the outcome of, of an investigation. What is the that consequence of his outrage? We'll see. Why, how could he possibly say uh, what the consequence uh, will be before we know what the facts are? Okay. Shouldn't we let the facts uh, be revealed by this independent uh, Inspector General report before we uh, make some conclusive judgments about what actions okay. need to be On taken. The IRS DOJ story. We understand that you guys can't get involved in a leaks investigation that could touch the White House and the administration, and that it's a legal violation and it's a legal issue if that happened. But this involved multiple months, multiple locations, many phones. Is the president at all concerned that about the breadth of the investigation, about the breadth and depth? that the DOJ is using to pursue <coughs> leaks in general, which has become a priority for this president. He's prosecuted in this administration more people for leaks than every other president put together. Jessica, what I can tell you is that this president believes uh, strongly uh, 
in the First Amendment and is a strong defender of the First Amendment. He believes strongly in the need for the press to be unfettered in its pursuit of investigative journalism. He also believes uh, strongly as a citizen and as president in the need to ensure that classified information is not leaked because it can endanger our national security interests. It can endanger uh, American men and women uh, around the world. But I cannot, and he cannot, appropriately comment on the specifics of an ongoing criminal investigation for the reasons that you yourself just raised. It's not about the specifics of this investigation. You, you, just this you listed the specifics of the investigation, okay. or at least as reported. Is he concerned at all about the precedent this is setting and that this is the legacy of his attorney general? This, I think, refers to this investigation, so I cannot comment on that. What I can tell you is the president absolutely uh, believes in the need for a uh, the press to be able to pursue uh, unfettered investigative journalism. Uh, and you saw that in uh, prior to his uh, arrival in this office, uh, when he was a senator and co-sponsored legislation uh, that would enhance protections for the media. And, and the principles uh, uh, that are behind that effort uh, are ones that he holds to this day. But I, 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 can't, I can't then take that to a specific case that's been reported in the press, again, that we learn about from the press appropriately. Because if we learned about it any other way, it would be inappropriate on it after the case is decided. Well, <laughs> okay, thank on. you. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, Jay. Uh, can you say categorically that nobody at the White House and nobody on the President's political team had any knowledge or uh, was involved in any way in the targeting of Tea Party groups by the IRS? Yes. Absolutely not. I mean, I, look, we found out about this uh, in, or at least the, the counsel's office was notified about this investigation, this activity, potential activity, very broadly uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and beyond that, you know, we have to, we, we learn about everything we know about this from what we see in your reports. Uh, so that's why we have to wait for the Inspector General's report uh, before we can assess, uh, based on that and what it tells us, what we know and about what happened and uh, what didn't uh, and what actions should be taken and then, and then decide on what next steps should be taken. People are going to be fired over this? I, again, that we'll have to see what the report concludes and, and what, uh, what else needs to be done to find out, if necessary, what happened. Uh, I, the reports that we've seen are very troubling. And if true, and depending on the reports, because there's been a series of different ones, but if it is true that there, were, uh, there was a knowing effort to target specific organizations, as reported conservative organizations, uh, that would be outrageous in the President's view, and there, and there should be consequences. And while you clearly can't comment on the Justice Department investigation, as a principle, does the President approve of the idea of prosecutors going through the personal phone records and work phone records of journalists and their editors? Uh, I, I, I appreciate the effort to generalize the question, but obviously that goes right to the heart of some of the reporting on this specific case. I can tell you that the President believes uh, that the press, as a rule, uh, needs to be uh, to have uh, an unfettered ability to pursue investigative journalism. And it would be unfettered if you're worried about having your phone records. Well, again, I can't I can't respond to this in the specific. And uh, you know, I, I I am very understanding of the questions on this issue, and and appreciate uh, the uh, the nature of the questions. And I think they 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 go to important issues, and they go to the fundamental issue of finding the balance between, when it comes to leaks of classified information, of, of, of our nation's secrets, if you will, uh, between the need to protect those, that information because of the national security implications of not protecting them, on the one hand, and the need to allow uh, for uh, an unfettered press and its, uh, in its pursuit of investigative journalism. So this is a balance that the President believes is important that we have to find. Uh, and. Uh, you know, how he views these issues can be uh, seen in, in the, the actions and, and proposals he's made in the past. But when it comes to this specific case, uh, I simply cannot get into the details of our view or his view of it. And just the last question. And just the last question. Um, how, is all of this, all this swirl of controversy and stories uh, affecting the President's ability to pursue his agenda? The President is focused on what he believes the American people expect from him 
and from their leaders in Washington. And you have seen that and you will continue to see the, that in, in the, the days and weeks and months ahead. Overwhelmingly, Americans are concerned about continuing the recovery out of the worst recession since the Great Depression, building on uh, the job creation that we've seen, uh, continuing to uh, expand and s make more secure the middle class, uh, taking the necessary steps to invest in our future so that our economy can grow later. And that means uh, bipartisan cooperation on things like investing in infrastructure or in innovation, in the kind of investment uh, in the innovation hubs that the President talked about in Austin last week. You know, these are the issues that he's focused on. Uh, they include comprehensive immigration reform, which he is constantly discussing with uh, leaders and members of Congress, uh, a bipartisan effort that he believes uh, can and should produce a law that he can sign that reflects the principles that he laid out a long time ago. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. And he's focused on that work. Chip, good Thank to see you. you. Good to see Welcome you. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Um, as you know, numerous members of Congress so over a couple, period of a couple of years uh, wrote the IRS and asked if conservative groups were being targeted. <clears throat> those officials did not respond. If it turns out that those officials did know at the time uh, that they were, they, uh, the conservative groups were being or had been targeted, should those officials be punished? Uh, that goes into, I mean, I. The, the if phrasing is appropriate. If what we're seeing in some of these reports about specific targeting and actions taken by uh, personnel within the IRS uh, turns out to be true, uh, then you know, people should be held accountable. And, and what that means in concrete action, we'll have to see based on, on the information uh, and the facts that are gathered, for, uh, principally at least at first by the Inspector General. So. Uh, you heard from the President yesterday. You heard uh, the outrage that he conveyed at the reports of this kind of activity. An outrage or potential outrage? I mean, he's well, saying yeah. he's only going to be, only well, going to be outraged if. I don't think you would want a President to be outraged on something that turned out, about something that turned out not to be true. We have to wait. He apologized for part of it. Don't well, we know that part of it is fact? It's not in the if again, area anymore. It's let's, let's, fact. I, I, I agree with that, and, and I think that that is, was reflected in, in the tone uh, and the nature of the comments you saw from the President. But on the broader issue here about getting all the facts, it really is important in our view and the President's view uh, that we let the uh, independent Inspector General complete uh, that report, uh, that we assess it when we see it, because we haven't seen it. Uh, there have been suggestions in the reports that some of it has, has uh, uh, leaked out, but we haven't seen it. We don't have access to it. And when we do, we'll be able to assess it a lot uh, more specifically than we can now. And one other question, following up on Jim's question about what he called the confluence of issues. You've got Benghazi, IRS, HHS, DOJ. <coughs> um, if you read some of the articles on this, it almost sounds like there is a siege going on. Is there a siege mentality back there in the West Wing right now? Absolutely not. We uh, are focused on uh, the things that we can do to help the middle class, the things that we can do to move our economy forward. Uh, to help our kids get educated, uh, to uh, work with Congress to achieve what will hopefully be a bipartisan comprehensive immigration bill that this President can sign into law. Working with Congress, as you've seen over the last weeks and months, uh, to see if we can find common ground uh, on reducing our deficit in a balanced way that will help the economy grow, help it create more jobs. Uh, you know, we are focused on you know, these fundamental issues that the American people sent this President uh, to this office twice now uh, to focus on. And, you know, I, I, I understand the, 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 you know, the, the effort, I mean, the, the, the understand, I understand the, the natural inclination to try to bunch some of these things together, but there really is uh, a distinction here, and I think you heard it from the President, that the, uh, you know, the ongoing obsession, and I'm quoting now somebody uh, describing Speaker of the House, the ongoing obsession uh, with talking points and Benghazi and, and the, uh, the attempts to politicize that uh, constitute a sideshow that's driven purely by uh, or largely by uh, political interest and not the interest of finding out exactly what happened and who was responsible and taking the steps that we need to take to ensure that our diplomats and our facilities are secure. 
That's what the President's been focused on. That's what you've seen in the uh, report uh, from the ARB, uh, the Accountability Review Board, that uh, was overseen by Admiral uh, Mullen and, and, and Ambassador Pickering. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's what you've seen in the President's uh, insistence that the investigation led by the FBI, FBI into finding out uh, who was responsible for the deaths of four Americans uh, reach a point where we can bring those responsible to justice. Jacob, when, on the AP phone records, what prevents the President from picking up a phone, calling Eric Holder and asking him what happened? Uh, I, enormous, uh, a great deal prevents the President from doing that. It would be wholly inappropriate for the President to involve himself in a criminal investigation that, as Jessica points out, uh, at least as reported, involves uh, uh, leaks of information from the administration. I mean, imagine the story on Fox uh, if that were to happen. So uh, that's why. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this is, this is, we have seen from the press reports uh, the information about uh, attempts to seek phone records from the Associated Press. And we're not involved in those decisions. And we can't comment on an ongoing criminal investigation for reasons that I think, I know that maybe the <laughs> question was rhetorical, but I think are pretty apparent to uh, everyone who's covered these things over the years. Is it your understanding that no one could have ordered this but the Attorney General? That is, well, it's my understanding that this is something that the Department of Justice does and that the investigators <laughs> in the Department of Justice uh, handle. There is, I believe, when it comes to these kinds of things, uh, a decision-making process, uh, but I would refer you to the Department of Justice for who actually made the decision that's been reported, because again, our information comes only from press reports on this. If that turns out, it turns out to be the Attorney General or whoever it turns out to be, will the President have confidence in that person? The President has confidence in the Attorney General. He has confidence in his team over at the Department of Justice. I think that the, again, I'm not going to comment on the specifics of an investigation here. I think that it is important to note that, as I've said earlier, that there is a balance here that has to be struck uh, between our national security interests and the need uh, to prevent classified information from leaking, classified information that can endanger Americans and harm our national security. On the one hand, and the President's firm commitment to uh, the need for reporters to be able to, in an unfettered way, pursue investigative journalism. And do you believe it's possible to strike that balance and at the same time subpoena the phone records of I, reporters? Wendell, I, I, I just can't comment on the specific uh, reports that you cite. I can say that the President does believe that that uh, balance should be sought and can be found, but it is a, uh, it is a balance and therefore something that, uh, you know, we need to constantly work at. And you've seen in the past from the, the measures that the President supported as a Senator that, that he believed action should be taken to uh, alter the balance. But I cannot comment on this specific investigation for all the obvious reasons. But we know it happened just as the IRS uh, admitted what it had done in terms of the, the Tea Party and other groups. Uh, the AP knows its records were, phone records were subpoenaed because the Justice Department told the AP. Mm -hmm. The President but I find any way that that might fit in the balance that you say needs again, to be Again, it would be inappropriate to comment on the specific investigation and the methods that have been reported. I can tell you that it is important to protect our national security uh, classified information. Uh, it is also, in the President's view, uh, essential to allow journalists to be able to uh, pursue in an unfettered way investigative journalism. Jay. Mr. Todd. You keep talking about it, that then-Senator Obama supported a certain piece of legislation mm -hmm. that is a fact. As President, he killed that piece of legislation uh, in, in October of 2009 that made it so that the protections that he supported, having judicial review on this well, decision President about subpoena, and then he, there was an opportunity for this bill to be passed. Chuck Schumer was supportive of it, uh, and he said it was the White House that had problems with it and killed. Well, I think, I think first of all, you're, you're talking about separate pieces of legislation and, and a legislative history that uh, uh, bears a little more looking into. The president's position on this is what it was as a senator. The, uh, but the fact is, I cannot then appropriately apply his support for that. If measure he this piece of legislation, we wouldn't be having this conversation today because there would be uh, a judicial, he supported a judicial review when it came to some of this. And what happened to it in 2007? 
I'm asking you what happened There's to it in 2009 when well, he was again, president you, you, of the United you, you, States. The legislative history here is a little more complicated than you present. But, but the Democrats were in charge. You had Chuck. Sch I mean, this is 2009. This, mm -hmm. I, I don't. Who cares about 2007? We know what he said on the campaign trail right. in 2008 in front of the Associated Press when it came to this issue. He had a chance to support this and make this bill happen. The President's Why did on he this change has not his changed. position? No, yes, it has. It hasn't he, it, the administration said that they essentially the president changed his position because of certain things on national security. Can you explain well, why he the, changed his position? Again, broadly speaking, the president does support the ability of journalists in an unfettered way to pursue investigative journalism. He believes that we have to find a balance uh, between that goal. The and he, had in, he believed in 08. He doesn't. He didn't believe in well, once he was president. Again, I, I think that uh, you know, he has addressed this some, and I think he, you know, you are obviously free to ask him when the, the next time he has a press conference to ask him about this. But the the fact is, as president, uh, as president, uh, he obviously has responsibilities as commander in chief to ensure that classified information, that the nation's secrets, uh, that is hi highly sensitive information is not leaked because the leaking of that information can endanger uh, individuals as well as our overall national but security interests. The third party should have to make that decision. I mean, you know, that that's fine. As a candidate, he believed, he said, that the point of the press is sometimes to be a watchdog of the watchdog mm -hmm. a little bit, and that the judiciary branch <laughs> is probably the appropriate place for them to make that determination. Look, you guys will claim classified, you know, and it's not just you as an administration, any administration claims everything is somehow national security leak can fall under this rubrics of that. But having a third party make that decision about is it truly going to endanger lives? Is it truly going to do this? And you make your make your case in front of a third party. Does the president support that kind of well, I just, that I don't kind have, of protection for media sources. I, I don't have an answer to that specific scenario that you laid out. I can tell you that the president does he support. Like supported in 2008. Well, then he does support protections for the media. He does believe that we need to in, take measures to ensure that the media can pursue investigative journalism uh, in an unfettered way. And we have to balance that goal with uh, the very real national security interests that we have as a nation. Uh, and. You know, understandably, there is great concern when classified information is leaked that uh, can jeopardize our national security interests or endanger individuals. Uh, I want to follow up on the IRS. Mm -hmm. I, I still, still don't quite understand the timeline. We had members of Congress complaining about this for two years. Did it just never reach you guys here at the White House that there was these complaints that conservative groups felt that they were being singled out and targeted? At any point in time? I mean, I'm not sure that people. I'm sure people were aware of and knew the, some of the stories but I, that had been reported about the complaints, but uh, we were not aware of any activity uh, or of any review conducted by the Inspector General until several weeks ago. Should you have and, been made and aware I, sooner? Well, I was asked that before, and I don't want to... I don't understand the... I don't understand... Uh, let, let, let's just say that... Why wouldn't you want to have known? Well, first of all, we, you know, for, for all the reasons why there should be uh, distance between you know, why the IRS should not be politicized, uh, you know, there has to be that distance. But on the specific question that you have, I want to wait before and, and see what the report says and wait and see what we actually know happened and what the facts are before we comment beyond what the President said yesterday uh, on this matter and before we make any decisions or uh, pronouncements about what actions should be taken. I mean, you heard what the President said about what he believes uh, and what he feels should what's reported about specific targeting turn out to be true. Uh, but we need to wait and see if that's in fact the case and how and, 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 and what the scope of it is before we make decisions about how to proceed. Do you have any update about when you're going to, I know that uh, Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee is saying he's been waiting for an explanation on, on, the, on uh, Ahmed Karzai claiming cash payments from the CIA and that these cash payments are continuing and he's been confirming this and claiming it in Afghanistan and, and Senator Corker was hoping for an explanation from the President and he says it's now been two letters and he hasn't gotten any explanation. I'll have, I have, I, I, I'm not aware of the letters. I'll have to take the question. Um, you know, I, the specific story itself uh, you know, involves the CIA and I'd have to re refer you to them. But uh, in, uh, Still, with regards to the letters, I'll let you know if, if, uh, if there's a response. Jay. Yeah. Jay, you've uh, used this uh, formulation about the President's support for unfettered investigative reporting a number of times here. Um, 
to what extent is he is the uh, former constitutional law professor in the Oval Office uh, torn between that philosophy and the case for uh, you know going after leaks? I think the appropriate way to describe it is that the president believes there needs to be a balance uh, because uh, there is uh, an interest in making sure that classified information that is sensitive is not leaked and because of the consequences to national security and to individuals. Uh, but there is also an interest in the President's view in ensuring that the press can pursue investigative journalism uh, and be unfettered in that pursuit. And, you know, to, to, to the earlier point that Chuck was making, you know, even after he became president, the attorney general and director of national intelligence, after the president took office, his attorney general and his director of national intelligence sent a letter to Congress in November of 2009 expressing the administration's support for media shield legislation. Uh, so the position that the president held as a senator, he continues to hold as president. Uh, but that balance is important. And, you know, it, Again, without commenting on specific reports about uh, specific cases, uh, you know, we have to be mindful of the fact that national security interests uh, are significant and classified information uh, needs to be protected. Well, he has to know that uh, a reporter can't uh, be unfettered if, uh, if a reporter is, is subjected to a fishing expedition of personal phone records and, and office phone records. Well, you know, I, I, broadly speaking, I think that the President uh, understands that a reporter needs to uh, be shielded in the way that he's supported as a senator and has supported as a President. I cannot, because of the nature of your question, express an opinion about uh, reported developments in a criminal investigation currently underway at the Department of Justice. You just, you just said categorically that you could say no one from the White House or in the President's political team was involved. There's a pretty unequivocal answer on your part. And yet the bulk of this press conference is you saying you don't have all the facts. It's a wait-and-see well, approach. That's a fair point. Tell, tell, what, what, I, what I can tell you is that... What gives you that confidence? I can tell you that, as I think I said yesterday, the White House counsel was alerted about this uh, IG review and the general topic of it several, just a few weeks ago. And uh, prior, I mean, I, and I, uh, you know, didn't How find out about that. from being categorically certain that no one from the White House's team or the political team was I involved? have no reason to believe. Uh, and so you're doing that on good faith, or this is just your well, assumption? I, because I, I, I can tell you that uh, I am not aware of anyone here knowing about it. It would be obviously. Uh, so it's down to your direct knowledge of being aware of anyone here. Hans, I, I, you know, you can ask me if, you know, somebody who you've works asserted, on in you've, the... You've asserted something categorically, no, and I'm I trying to understand how you know that. that. I, uh, I am certainly not aware of and am confident that uh, no one here uh, was involved in this. We found out about it just a few weeks ago, and only, you know, when I say we, I didn't, the President didn't, but the White House Counsel's Office only found out about the review being conducted and uh, coming to conclusion by the Inspector General. So what gives you the confidence? I, I think I, I, I think I, I can say that I feel confident in that, but I, you know, I, I don't have any. Do you have any facts? You're asking me to prove a negative, Hans. Well, you're, you've made the assertion. You've asserted that you're confident that no one. You've, you're the one that actually put the, you know, put it up. Again, you heard the president express his views, and uh, we're going to wait and see what the facts are based on the independent inspector general uh, review, and then we will make judgments about about those facts and what next steps uh, might be taken and by whom and with uh, what actions might be taken. Uh, but I'm just not going to get into any more details about it because it would be inappropriate to do so. All right. I want to follow up on a question <coughs> Jessica asked that has nothing to do with a specific <coughs> investigation. This administration in the last four years has prosecuted twice as many leakers as every previous administration combined. How does that reflect balance? I would say that the President is committed to the press's ability to pursue information, uh, to uh, defending the First Amendment. He is also, as a citizen and as Commander-in-Chief, uh, committed to the proposition that we cannot uh, allow you know, classified information to be, uh, that can do harm to our national security interests or to endanger individuals to be 
to be leaked, and that is a balance that has to be struck. But the record of the last four years does not suggest balance. That's your opinion, no, Ari. It's but it's twice I, as many prosecutions as all previous administrations combined. That's well, not I, even close. I understand that there, you know, that there are ongoing investigations that preceded this administration. But I, I again, I'm not going to. I can tell you what the president's views are, and the president's views include his defense of the First Amendment, his belief that journalists ought to be able to uh, pursue information uh, in an unfettered way. And that is backed up by a support for a media shield law, both as senator and as president. And uh, it is also true that he believes a balance needs to be struck between those goals and the need to protect classified information. And, and it, you know, you're not going to hear him say that it's okay for the nation's secrets to be freely reported uh, when that information can endanger our national security and do harm to individuals and endanger individuals. Do you think a fair analysis of this administration's actions reflect the views you've just described? I believe that the president supports balance and, and that he has made that clear, uh, both as president and within his administration. Uh, you know, I, I cannot comment on the specific case, uh, but I can tell you what the president believes and what his actions in, and, and have been in the past. There are pockets on elections? Uh, let, me, let me move around a bit. Okay. You just mentioned that you said the president has made this goal of balance mm -hmm. clear within his administration. Can you describe how he's communicated that within the administration or within the Justice against the Justice Department as far as guidance? Well, the president's position, I think I just cited a November 2009 uh, letter to Congress from the Attorney General uh, and the Director of National Intelligence expressing the administration's support, the Obama administration's support for Media Shield legislation. Uh, so that is uh, a clear expression uh, from several components of the administration about the president's views. I can tell you that as somebody who spends a lot of time with him and speaks about the press frequently that he uh, firmly believes in the need to defend the First Amendment and the need in, you know, for reporters to be able to do their jobs. Uh, he is also, as commander-in-chief and a citizen, uh, interested in the protection of sensitive information that can, if released, endanger our national security or uh, endanger individuals. And I think that is a balance that every uh, American would expect a president to seek, uh, both in his views and in his actions. He's talked about that with you privately or with Eric I'm just Holder saying that I know, because I've spent time with him, what his, you know, his, his general views about this matter are. Jay. April? Jay, um, a couple of questions. Uh, did you know that the Attorney General has recused himself of this investigation? Did you know that? I did learn that before I came out. It was reported right before I came out. So you said earlier that it wouldn't make any sense. It would be inappropriate for the president to talk to As them. a general matter, for the president to pick up the phone and call the attorney general about an ongoing criminal investigation led by the Department of Justice into, in, in part, the administration, I think it's safe to say that would be inappropriate. And okay. I think everybody in this room would consider it inappropriate. Okay. Well, let me ask you uh, two more questions. Um, is there an expectation around here at the White House that this um, leak investigation can expand to more news outlets? beyond the Associated Press. Again, this is not something we would have any knowledge about, and I would have to refer you to the Department of Justice. And one more question. At any time during this administration, do you have any knowledge of any wiretaps or any tapping of workspaces of reporters? This is a serious question. No. And again, uh, this is, <laughs> I, I, I don't, and, and any suggestion that somebody here would is, you know, goes to the heart of what I'm saying. Uh, you know, these are questions for the Department of Justice, and I'm, you know, I would refer you to what's been reported. Uh, you know, first of all, Connie, happy birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, is there a possibility that any of the private Obama administration people who support the president or the Democratic candidates could have instigated these leaks, not the IRS or anybody? Uh, instigated the leaks? I, uh, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, I think that the reporting, you know, that the people, the sources are cited. Uh, I mean, you're, you're asking me sort of hypotheticals about things that I wouldn't be able to answer. And one more question. The president is human. When he first found out about these, especially the AP story, did he curse? Did he scream? What was his reaction? Oh, well, I'm not going to read out a private conversation, but I can tell you uh, uh, that he found out about it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis. Three quick questions. Can I just follow up? When you were saying that the president doesn't uh, involve himself in an ongoing criminal investigation, just to clarify, which ones are we talking about? I'm thinking about Trayvon Martin, and I'm thinking about Skip Gates. Just could you explain, clarify Come what on, you Alexis. mean? The president, uh, these are the, the federal investigation that has been reported, again, based on news reports, and we do not, uh, appropriately so, uh, have any insight into that investigation or communications about that investigation. So 
uh, you know, we have no knowledge of independently of any attempt by the Justice Department to uh, subpoena phone records of the Associated Press beyond the press reports that we've read. Second question about the IRS. Um, following up on what Chuck and Hans were asking you, it was reported in very estimable news organizations for several years. The complaints from the organizations that felt that they were being targeted by IRS. We have very prominent lawmakers on the Republican side of the aisle who actually gave speeches about it and talked about it long before you would have known about the IG report. So I just wanted to make sure, are we going to find out because of the president's animosity or his feelings or his shortcomings about Citizens United that he himself appreciated or wanted the IRS to be looking and scrutinizing those in the That's a preposterous assertion, Alexis, and the fact of the matter is you served from the president that if this turns out to be true, uh, he would be outraged. And he specifically said if there were specific targeting of conservative groups, uh, that would be wrong and outrageous and there should be people held accountable for it. Uh, it's not who we are. It's not the way the IRS should ever operate if it turns out to be true. Can I just follow up? Third question, quick question on Benghazi. CNN uh, obtained part of an email leaked as part of that email trail that was sent to the Congress. And you've seen it online, I'm sure. So my question is, because we're eight months into what you call the political circus, mm -hmm. and part of that email has come out, will the White House... I think the entire email, email, this report I read, saw the, showed the entire email, and what it showed is that uh, Republicans who were leaking these press, these these uh, emails that have been shared with Congress, uh, didn't just do that. They decided to fabricate portions of an email, and make up portions of an email in order to fit a political narrative. And I think I'm not surprised by it, because we've seen it again and again. We've seen it in the remember the issue in the in the uh, committee's report, the Republican committee report, uh, about you know Secretary Clinton's signature, and uh, the fact that they, of course, didn't include. The truth behind that, that this was an autom automated signature and she had no uh, involvement in that email. So, you know, I, I think it just reinforces what we've seen, which is the, uh, an ongoing effort to politicize this, to take, to cherry pick information, or in this case, just make it up in order to fit a political narrative. So my question to you is, after eight months of what you call the political circus, mm -hmm. why not just put out the emails now? Do the data dump. Yeah. Well, I'd say a couple of things, because not in your question is the fact that we provided these emails to Congress, to relevant committees, as well as leaders, several months ago. At the time, uh, some Republicans said they were, they, they were fairly satisfied with the information, that uh, they felt they knew what they needed to know. This was about the confirmation of John Brennan as uh, uh, the new head of the CIA. They moved forward that, with that nomination and confirmed John Brennan in that position. Uh, the Speaker of the House is re reported to be obsessed with Benghazi and the political benefits of this pursuit. Uh, turn well, hold on, I'll get back to it. I'm just doing a great prelude to the answer, which is that uh, <laughs> preface to the answer. So, it, 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 the Speaker of the House is obsessed with this, has made all sorts of demands, and then it turns out that his office was provided the information, but as obsessed as he was, he didn't show up to get the briefing and spend the time with the emails, but a staffer did, so he's known all along. Uh, what these emails contain and what they don't contain. So I, I think the evidence is pretty overwhelming. That well, the, uh, the answer is what I've said before, which is that, that, was that these, this is, as it has been consistently the case with administrations of both parties, the internal deliberations of, uh, an, Alexis, shake your head and editorialize, but let me, you let me finish. Congress covering on sure. other administrations when it didn't work and the information comes out. Just put it out. Well, the information comes out, but not, uh, if, if people leak information as they have on the Hill, you know, for political purposes, that's one thing. As a matter of course, releasing internal de uh, deliberations is something that uh, goes to the, uh, the kind of protections that have existed for the executive branch for many administrations of both parties. Uh, and the fact is, and I think again, in the full reporting of this story, we did something rather extraordinary, which is provide these emails to the committees, the relevant committees, in camera, fancy legal term for meaning they could spend all the time they wanted with them, make notes, uh, copy them verbatim or not so verbatim as it turns out, uh, and, 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 and then uh, you know, go on their way and make their assessments, which is what we did. Uh, Lily. Thank you, Jack. Uh, has the President spoken to the uh, Pakistan's incoming Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif after the election? He has. Uh, today the President spoke by phone with Nawaz Sharif. 
uh, president of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz to congratulate him on his party's success in the May 11 parliamentary elections. As you know, over the weekend, the president also commended the people of uh, Pakistan on the successful completion of their parliamentary elections. The United States stands with all Pakistanis in welcoming this historic, peaceful, and transparent transfer of civilian power, which is a significant milestone in Pakistan's democratic progress. It really is important to note the significance of consecutive uh, democratic elections and the transfer of civilian power from one government to the next. The United States and Pakistan have a long history of working together on mutual interests, and this administration looks forward to continuing our cooperation with the Pakistani government that emerges from this election as equal partners in supporting a more stable, secure, and prosperous future for the people of Pakistan. In an interview to Wall Street Journal, the Prime Minister, incoming Prime Minister, spoke about the drone strikes, and he wants that. <coughs> did that issue came up during the conversation? Uh, I, I think the contents of this conversation are reflected in in, in what I just uh, what I just said. Okay. Mark, does the White House, uh, amid all those um, nice words about the Pakistan election, have a position on the fact that um, the New York Times Islamabad bureau chief was? asked to leave the country with 72 hours notice, uh, literally on the day of that election? I don't have a specific reaction to that from the White House. Uh, we obviously uh, have a broad interest, uh, not just in the matters that we've been discussing here today, but in general, including in international reporting, in, the, uh, uh, in uh, governments around the country permitting journalists, American and otherwise, uh, to uh, operate freely. And I don't have the specifics on this case, uh, at least in an official capacity. I have certainly have followed it and read about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's ge a general principle that we believe reporters ought to be uh, able to work and to work safely around the world. Can I follow on, on one thing on Benghazi? Mm -hmm. Does the White House, uh, and this goes back to the talking points, does the White House believe that the State Department had valid equities that needed to be protected in the drafting of those talking points? Uh, I think, well, I would refer you, I'd point you to the CNN story about, uh, you know, a particular email that was misrepresented uh, in the reporting about, uh, about it originally, where there actually no discussion of the State Department specifically. But in general, the process that we've described where agencies with a stake in an issue like what happened in Benghazi obviously, uh, you know, are, are part of it and, and, and present their views. In this case, the CIA had the lead when it came to drafting the uh, talking points. Many, much unreported, is that many of the iterations of these so-called talking points, or at least the discussions about what should be included, contain changes made from within the CIA, as I think people have recognized. Uh, but in the end, uh, you know, what was produced by the CIA uh, was uh, a distillation of both the, the, the view of uh, the agencies involved, but most importantly, reflective of what the CIA felt at the top. Uh, was a fair representation, representation for public use of what they knew at that time. And, you know, as we know, uh, and as was made clear in the talking points themselves, because they were caveated to explain that more information would become available, that our picture would change and evolve of what happened, you know, some of what was originally put forward as what we believed to have happened in Benghazi turned out not to be true, which we acknowledged uh, and talked about uh, when that became evident. So, as the President said yesterday, you know, with the head of the NCTC went up and talked about just that just a few days after Ambassador Rice was on those Sunday shows. But the, key, the key misrepresentation in that email was the fact that uh, the email as reported had the State Department singled out, and it appears the valid email did not have the State Department singled out. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, the State Department raised a series of concerns. Um, are we to believe that those concerns were not as uppermost in the minds of the White House? I, I think you should believe that that, as I understand it, it was a, there was an effort here, a focus here and elsewhere on making sure that what we said as an administration and what we provided to Congress uh, was as, as accurate as it, as it could be and did not, you know, there was a lot of misinformation, as is always the case in an incident like this in the initial hours and days afterwards, uh, and, uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, assessments about what might have happened, but, but uh, contradictory information about what might have happened, and it's the, the job of the intelligence community in this case to sort of filter through that and, and assess uh, what its position is and what those points 
for public consumption uh, can reflect, and that's, and that's what happened. So I don't think it was about one particular agency. I think it was about, uh, you know, the community at large, uh, led by the, in this case, CIA. Jay. Thanks, Jay. Um, Jay. One more. One more, Jay. One more. Turkey. Turkey. One more. Turkey. Thank you. Turkish Prime Minister uh, is right now on the plane uh, coming here. Uh, my first question, two quick question. In Rayhan, the border town uh, with Syria, 50 people got killed mm -hmm. and uh, dozens of injured. Uh, what's your reaction? We have not heard any reaction from the White House. And is this going to change any of your uh, uh, approach to spillover effect your one of your allies? And second question we'll ask after this. Well, first of all, the United States condemns the car bombings uh, in Rehanla over the weekend. And we stand with Turkey against uh, such horrific violence. We extend our deepest condolences to the families of the victims, and our thoughts are with those who are wounded. It, it, it's, it's important to note always, but particularly appropriate with the arrival uh, of the Prime Minister, uh, that Turkey is one of our strongest partners. We have worked shoulder to shoulder with the Turks to counter uh, terror threats, and this attack will only strengthen our resolve to work together to protect our people and fight instability and violence in the region. Now, this is something that I fully expect. This, this incident uh, will be a matter of discussion between the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, as friends and NATO allies, the United States and Turkey are partners in addressing a range of critical global and regional issues. Uh, they will clearly discuss Syria, uh, which is an interest uh, that they share. Uh, and they will also talk about stability in the Middle East, trade and economic cooperation, and countering global terrorism overall. Uh, the, the Prime Minister's visit underscores the close friendship between the U.S. and Turkey and the strategic importance we place on broadening and deepening uh, that relationship moving forward. Last one. On uh, chemical weapon in, in Syria, UN uh, chemical weapon chief said that time is running out. He said this a few days ago, and he said that traces of a attack uh, uh, might be impossible to obtain very soon. Uh, and it has been over three weeks that your administration admitted that uh, uh, it was used. What's the latest update? Is there any other evidence you have? Mm -hmm. it? Well, we are working with uh, our allies as well as with the Syrian opposition to gather evidence. Uh, we continue to call on uh, President Bashar al-Assad uh, to allow the United Nations to conduct an investigation into the use of chemical weapons, an investigation that uh, President Assad said he wanted uh, but is now blocked. Uh, but we're not relying on the UN alone. We are pursuing and gathering information uh, independently of that and working with our uh, allies and the Syrian, most importantly, the Syrian opposition. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't have the uh, depth of information about the progress that's being made to, uh, to assess whether or not the report you said about, uh, about the evidence available, whether or not that's the case. I know that we have been, for some na time now, uh, working uh, in an effort to build on the intelligence community's assessment about the use of chemical weapons uh, to make sure that we uh, have uh, a case, if you will, uh, a set of facts that can be corroborated and reviewed uh, and, 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 and from which we can make assessments about uh, possible policy actions. Even as that takes place, as you have seen, uh, at the direction of the President, we have stepped up our humanitarian assistance. We have stepped up our assistance to the Syrian opposition. We have made assistance available directly to uh, the military, Supreme Military Council of the opposition, non-lethal assistance, but we have stepped it up. And, uh, you know, that process of constantly assessing the options that are available to us in this situation, assessing the uh, ways that we can provide assistance to the opposition will continue, uh, even as we gather facts about possible chemical weapon use. Thanks very much.